Hello everyone, this is Earth Science teacher Tim Martin, and in this video I want to introduce you to star clusters and galaxies. I hope you've had the opportunity to go out on a clear dark night and look at some of the wonders of the sky. If you've gone out on a winter night, you may recognize these groups of stars. Some people, when they look at this, will right away recognize the constellation Orion. I think you have a pretty good imagination if you can see a fierce hunter. But there's something important about this grouping of stars. You'll notice right away that Betelgeuse in the upper left is 400 light years away. Epsilon Orionis in the center of the belt is 1,300 light years away. While Rigel in the lower right, 700 light years away. And oh yeah, the star Sirius down in the lower left is 8.5 light years away. We do recognize them as a constellation, which may be helpful for navigation and finding our way around in the night sky. But another way to look at this group of stars is through this graphic. Of course, the Earth is not this big, but if we can just imagine, we're over on the left-hand side of this graph, and the distance is spread out along the x-axis. You can see some of the stars are 200 light years away, others at nearly 1,400 light years away. Truly, there is no connection between the closer stars and the more distant ones. So constellations are just random collections of stars based on our vantage point in space. On the other hand, other places in the night sky, we can see actual groupings of stars. Again, on a dark winter's night, if you look nearly overhead, you may notice this small cluster of stars near the top of this image. If we zoom in with a telephoto, we see these stars similar in brightness actually are related to each other. So let's talk about star clusters for a little bit. These are small groupings of stars bound together by gravity. You may notice that I use large and small in very loose terms. When I say small, there's kind of two groupings of star clusters. We have open clusters, which may have hundreds or even thousands of stars. Globular clusters, on the other hand, may have 100,000 to close to a million stars. These are not the same as constellations. Star clusters are groups of stars that are actually bound together by gravitational forces, where constellations are just apparent groupings due to our position in space. So that star cluster we were just looking at is often known as M45, or the Pleiades, sometimes referred to as the Seven Sisters. This star cluster has approximately a thousand member stars and is at a distance of about 500 light years away. You may not be familiar with the numerical designation or the English name of this star, but I'm sure you know it by its Japanese name. That's right, it's Subaru. This symbol is on the front of my car and many others like it. NJC 889 and 864 is a double star cluster in the constellation Perseus. The image of these two star clusters was just taken with a telephoto on my camera. These clusters are approximately 7,500 light years away. M6, or the butterfly cluster, is another relatively close open star cluster. These stars are 1,500 light years away. You'll notice that, of course, there are many background stars in this image as well. On the other hand, a globular cluster is very different. M13, or the great globular cluster in the constellation Hercules, is a beautiful object for a backyard telescope. Residing at 21,000 light years away, this star cluster contains hundreds of thousands of stars. This image I took with my small telescope. But with a professional-grade telescope, this NASA image reveals far more stars. Globular cluster NGC 6093 also is another beautiful example of a globular cluster containing in the range of hundreds of thousands to maybe a million stars. This one at a distance of 32,000 light years away. Omega Centauri is the closest globular cluster to Earth, although it's only visible in the southern hemisphere. At 15,800 light years away, this is an image just of the central region of this globular cluster. It's fun to think about what it might be like to live on a planet that orbits a star in this cluster. But unlike what you might think, there would simply be hundreds of thousands of bright stars in the night sky. It would not appear as though there were multiple suns. Just by point of reference, Proxima Centauri, the closest star other than the sun, 
is 4.2 light years away. That's 265,000 AU. In the center of this globular cluster, star distances are approximately 13,000 AU apart. Or, another way of putting that, is 400 times further than the planet Neptune. So there would not be multiple suns, but there would be many, many bright stars in the night sky. As we think about star clusters, we may also turn our eyes to this unique patch of the summer sky. I took this photograph in the dark sky location of the Great Sand Dune National Park in Colorado. Here we can see thousands upon thousands of stars. We know of this as the Milky Way. This image was taken high in the White Mountains. So this thing we call the Milky Way, what is it? Is it a star cluster? Is it just another grouping of stars? To learn more about the Milky Way, we needed to look beyond home. So this is our neighbor. At first, this was known as the Great Spiral Nebula in the constellation Andromeda. On closer inspection with a telescope, we can see that there are dusty patches with more powerful telescopes. As seen in this NASA image, we can definitely see the spiral structure and two other groups of stars orbiting around it. It was Edwin Hubble in 1924 who realized that this in fact was not a nebula, but actually a galaxy made up of billions and billions of stars. We now know that the Andromeda galaxy is 2.9 million light years away. So what is a galaxy? After understanding a bit about our neighbor, we've studied our own galaxy, the Milky Way. This NASA poster indicates how we've studied the Milky Way in many different types of light across the electromagnetic spectrum, from radio to infrared to optical light to X-ray and even gamma rays. This has led scientists to come up with this conception of what we believe the Milky Way to look like if we were able to view it from a distance. We can see that there's a bulge or a concentration of stars in the center and arms spiraling outward from this central bulge. We could imagine if we tipped this image slightly and even more, we could see this central region this central bulge is where many stars reside. Surrounding that is a flattened disk. Globular clusters tend to congregate around the central bulge in the area that we know of as the halo. So looking at both of these images, it turns out that our spiral galaxy is approximately 100,000 light years across. The disk, about a thousand light years thick. Our star, the sun, is located about halfway out in one of the spiral arms. So galaxies, they're large-scale groupings of stars bound together by gravity. They come in three basic types. We have spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, and irregular galaxies. When I say large-scale groupings of stars, it's worth noting that we're talking about billions to even trillions of stars. Let's take a look at some examples of each type of galaxy. M74 is a beautiful spiral galaxy, 30 million light-years away. At 35 million light-years away, M51 is known as the Whirlpool Galaxy. Here we can see a satellite galaxy orbiting along with the major spiral structure. At a distance of 98 million light years away, NGC 3370 is a particularly beautiful spiral galaxy. Another particularly interesting one, M104, at a distance of 55 million light years away. One thing that makes this extremely large galaxy very interesting is towards the center is a black hole with a mass more than a billion times the mass of our sun. We've studied the Sombrero galaxy across the spectrum as well. Here's a picture of the Sombrero galaxy in infrared taken with the Spitzer Space Telescope. It's in that spiral disk where we know a lot of new stars are being formed. There's a subset of spiral galaxies known as the Barr's spiral galaxies, such as we see here in this example of NGC 1300. This one at a distance of 61 million light years. Irregular galaxies, well, they're irregular. NGC 4449 is a great example of an irregular galaxy, as is M82. With no discernible shape, it seems as though something violent may be going on in the center of this galaxy, which, in fact, many large galaxies have active black holes in their center. Another irregular galaxy is the dwarf galaxy, NGC 1427, at a distance of 71 million light years. 
Elliptical galaxies are the real giants of the galaxy families. M87 is a very large galaxy, with likely in the order of several trillion stars. This resides at a distance of 71 million light years. M60 is another classic elliptical galaxy. In this image, we can also see a spiral galaxy in the upper right. IC2006 is another elliptical galaxy at a distance of 65 million light years. One final one, at a distance of 450 million light years, ESO325 is again another elliptical galaxy, and in this image we can see several more galaxies in the background. It's worth noting that many galaxies come in clusters, as we can see in this image of 4C73.08. This NASA Hubble telescope image shows us several elliptical, spiral, and irregular galaxies. One more classification of galaxies is worth noting in the antenna galaxy. First, some might be inclined to think that this was an irregular galaxy, but it had characteristics that looked almost spiral-like. It wasn't until we studied many more of these features, now we know there are many similar galaxies where actually two galaxies are gravitationally interacting. Galaxies are colliding. In this composite of many Hubble telescope images, we can see various galaxies that are gravitationally interacting with each other. It's worth noting, because of the immense distance between stars, it's unlikely there will be any stellar collisions during galaxy collisions, but rather the large structures, like nebula and major clusters, may interact with each other, which can lead to new star formation. I'd like to leave you with one final image. In this picture, called the ultra-deep field image by the Hubble telescope, there are four objects on this image that are stars within our own galaxy. Every other dot, every other smudge, blur, is not a star, but rather a galaxy. I hope you too find it incredible that a population of billions and billions of galaxies make up our universe. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again on another Earth Science video.